What's up, YouTube family? How y'all doing today? God bless. I just want to do a quick video today on how God is always trying to communicate um, with us. Um, well, communicate with everybody, including his chosen ones. Um, see, everybody's not, they, they, they consciousness is not raised high enough to get the communication from God. So God could be putting stuff right in front of their face, but they so worldly and so into the world, they miss what God trying to say to them. But to the chosen ones, to the to the to the um to the ones operating on a high frequency, on a high consciousness, that we like like music music playing in the background, God. Uh birds in our yard, God. Like we know exactly when God trying to communicate and say something to us, that he'll keep putting this um the same thing in our face until we get it. So I'm gonna break down um animals. I'm gonna break down how God communicates to his chosen ones in real time. So animals. I'm going to give you a quick uh, story real quick on um, how a cat saved my life. So um, I had a venue I was going to, a function I was going to, and um, and this is not even, and, and this is not even my cat. Uh, this, this is, I was, I, I was living in a room in, um house. So basically I was just written out a room. Um, and, but there's other people inside the house though, that they got, the, they written out rooms too, but we have access to the whole house as far as the bathroom, the kitchen. So, the, the cat was was um one of my roommates and he would the cat will always come to my room and be outside the door when i um early in the morning the cat outside my door um when i go to the bathroom in the middle of the night the cat right there outside my door and i'm thinking like why does cat love me so much i you know i fed it a couple of times but it's not I, i'm not the owner but the cat always gravitated towards me i never knew why it's because the cat knew who i was as far as my energy my pureness that the cat knew it was protected, and I would feed it, and, and I would and I would and I would treat it very very nice. That's why it always uh gravitated towards me. But gravitated towards me. But uh, let me tell you how the cat saved my life one one morning. So look, um, the cat was outside my door, and I you know I, I you know I said you know good morning cat whatever walk past. So as I'm leaving out to go to the function, the cat threw up everywhere and i'm thinking like damn the cat's sick so i'm looking at them looking at the throw up and i'm thinking like damn that he the cat just did that and i'm thinking like he, he uh, uh he must have ate something and he not he not feeling well and he's sick so i didn't think much enough of it i just thought the cat was sick it threw up and i'm thinking like the cat they, they didn't get a cat some bad food so i walked out and um and i went to my i went to my vent to the to the function and um i had coffee in my hand and at the function they were serving coffee so a guy asked me, hey, Mike, um, I'm about to go to Starbucks and get a coffee. Do you want one? And I thought that was kind of weird because I had coffee in my hand. The, the venue was serving coffee. So why would he ask me, um, do I want more coffee from Starbucks? And I said, no, I'm fine. Um, I just I just blew it off. Like, I'm fine. I got my own coffee. So about 10 minutes later, a guy rides up with coffee from Starbucks. And, and and he and he just gets in his car and and, and, and speeds off. So I, I just put it in my mind that he just told me that he was going to Starbucks, but somebody rolled up with Starbucks, and I had coffee in my hand and the venue was serving coffee. And let's just say I'm gonna put it like this: I'm not going to exploit nobody or nothing like that. Let's just say I wasn't well liked at this place that I was at. You know, I wasn't well liked. And um, he's gonna he's gonna see he's just gonna leave it at that. So when I start putting everything together and I start connecting all the dots, because sometimes as chosen ones we don't get it right then and there. We, we gotta like start thinking back on things. Then we gotta start connecting everything, and then we come to our conclusion. Um, and so basically the universe basically the universe warned me that morning through the cat throwing up that wherever you about to go you about to get poisoned. Don't don't eat it. Don't don't drink or don't eat it. And for him, for me to have coffee in my hand and for the venue to be serving coffee and for him to say, hey, I'm going I'm going to Starbucks. And what, what really gave it up was he told me he was going physically to Starbucks and get coffee. That's how you catch people in discrepancies. That's how lawyers is are, are able to poke holes in a prosecution case. Discrepancies, um, things that don't make sense. If you're telling me you're about to go get go to Starbucks and get coffee, nobody should be riding up with coffee in their hands. Nobody should be, nobody should be riding up with Starbucks with Starbucks coffee. Basically, the person that rolled up with the, with the coffee, 
that was the coffee that was tainted. But he wanted me to get it from a stranger, so it wouldn't look like I got it from the venue. So I couldn't I couldn't put it on the venue that I got poison. So basically, the person that rode up with the Starbucks, they had the poison cocktail to give to me, and the cat warned me that morning. But see, because I had my own coffee, I didn't want their coffee, and I was always taught this: never eat or drink from strangers. You never know what they did to it. That's the easiest way to kill somebody is food poisoning. The easiest way to kill somebody and get away with it is food poisoning. Nobody will never know or think where you got the food from, where you ate it from. You know what I mean? They're not. They're, they're not gonna. They're, they're not gonna go back and review all the tapes unless you're the president or a senator or somebody that's important to society. They just gonna say, you know, uh, natural causes, whatever, heart failure, kidney failure, because you know the poison shuts down all your organs, and um, then you just die. So they just say organ failure. Um, uh, you know, natural, done. They're not going to say that I was poisoned. So basically the cat, when the cat threw up that morning, the cat was letting me know, the universe was letting me know you're about to get poisoned. Wherever you're about to go, don't eat that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I, But I, I didn't put that all together until later on in the day, though, in the day that, and that's how I knew that, um, that's how the universe communicates with its chosen ones. That's how God communicates to his, with, his, with his chosen ones, through animals. Through animals, through TV, uh, uh, different signs um, um, when, you're out, when you're out in society. So, so basically, also, one more, uh, I'm going to put you on, I want to tell you something else. Every morning I wake up, there's always crows outside my window. Crows are associated with death. Unlearn that. That that's not true. That th when you see crows, that doesn't necessarily mean death. That's God watching over you, and that's, that's, that's showing your protection, that you're protected by God. Everywhere I go, is always a bunch of crows around me, and pe that'll freak people out, like, oh, I'm about to die. No, you got to unlearn what you've been learned. It's a lie. It's programming. Crows are letting you know that you have divine protection, and you're being watched by the spiritual realm. And anybody that try to harm you or do anything to you um, uh, will be destroyed or even murdered. I'm just, listen, I went over this... A couple of times in my last video, can you please stop thinking God is this this fucking teddy bear? He's cool, but he can but he can, but he could be the Grim Reaper too. He could be he could be a destroyer too. He could be something you never imagined. That's all through the Bible. Also, you can't you gotta stop thinking that 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 God is loving and he and he don't want to harm you. He doesn't. He is loving, but at the same time, is another side of God that 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 you don't want to see. Um, that 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 you don't you don't want to test his 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 temper, man. He, he he can get real nasty and angry and uh, do things to you that you couldn't imagine because you uh, you in sin and being disobedient. That's why. That's why. But um, but yeah, unlearn which unlearn which learn about crows. They're not they, they. It's not the symbolism of death. It's not that when you see when you see crows around you all the time, that's divine protection from your ancestors, from God, from the spiritual realm. They just basically let you know we got an eye on you and we watching to make sure nobody harms you because you have a job to do and your presence cannot be disturbed until that job is done. Also, uh, animals uh, always gravitate towards chosen ones because they know our energy. They know we're warm. They know that we don't want to harm them. We want to help them, feed them, comfort them. That we don't want to do anything to uh, to harm any animals. That's why they grab. That's why they naturally gravitate towards us. And um. And um. So uh, one, one more thing I want to touch on too. When the universe is trying to communicate to you, and um, trying to send you messages, it could be through in the form of animals. Um, it could be, uh, like in the form of like electronics, uh, weather. Oh one, more, oh, one more thing, weather. So let me tell you this. Let me tell you how God was trying to help, was trying to heal me and I wasn't paying attention. My, my consciousness wasn't raised. I wasn't operating on the frequency I'm operating on now. So I couldn't recognize it. So one day I was supposed to go to work, but I had this severe back pain. I mean, it was so severe. It was severe to where as though I felt I, that if I move, it hurt so bad that I didn't want to move. I was like paralyzed. That I couldn't move, that it hurt so bad. It hurt so bad that I couldn't move. I wanted to die. I'm not gonna lie to you. That I, that I, I said, man, look. I said, God, look. If I gotta feel this pain, to take me. I don't want to feel this pain no more. 
But, you know, God is always challenging our fortitude, man. He's always challenging us that he wants us to go through everything to make us stronger. He doesn't put us through things to hurt us. He puts us through things to make us stronger, to make us be able to, to get through anything. That's why we go through different trials and tribulations on the earth, because God is getting us ready. And uh, he's getting me ready. So, look, I had a severe pain. I just I didn't know what it was. It was lower back. I went to the hospital. They said I had I had a lower back strain. Inaccurate. Um, it was my sciatic nerve. It was inflamed because of my diet and, you know, and I was dehydrated. And so the inflammation came from the poor eating habits. So whereas though, uh, I had inflammation in my back because of my lower back, because of my diet. So God was let, so that day that, I, that, um, I missed work that day and everything that day that I was hurting and that I couldn't move and that, um, that I was in severe pain it poured down rain. I mean, I mean, downpour rain for hours. Downpour. I mean, a soaking rain. Downpour. And um, and when I got to the hospital, when I peed in the cup, one of the nurses said, "Yeah, your urine is too dark. You you're dehydrated. You're not drinking enough. You're not drinking enough water." And I thought about it, and I said, "Wow, God was communicating to me. You need to be drink more water to keep your organs lubricated to take the inflammation down." That's why that day that I was uh, hurting and I couldn't move and my lower back was so hurt is because God was letting me know that I, I needed to drink more water, that I needed, I needed more water, more H2O, more fluids, that I didn't have to go to the hospital to, for them to tell me that, that if I would have drunk water, it would have brought, brought the inflammation down and I would have started to feel better. That's all I needed was water. I was drinking coffee, uh, smoking cigarettes. I ain't going to lie to you. I got to be honest so you can know exactly what's going on in my life. I was drinking a lot of coffee that dehydrates you, tea that dehydrates you, and cigarettes that dehydrates you. So basically, so basically I was dehydrated from the inside. And um, my body started giving me signs that you need to be drinking more water because my sciatic nerve uh, was, um, uh, it was inflamed. I mean, as, as, as far as I had inflammation in my, in my lower back, the sciatic nerve. I don't, you know, that's the, that's the medical term, the doctor term, the sciatic nerve in your lower back. Um, it caused me, it caused me problems because of my, because of my poor eating habits and um, not drinking enough water. So that day, like I said, I repeated that when I, when, uh, when I was in severe pain, it would, tr tr uh, tr uh, 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 downpours, rain, uh, uh, soaking rain, downpour. And I was thinking like, dang, my back hurt and it's pouring down rain. What else can go wrong? But that was the universe communicating to me. You need to drink more water so you can feel better. And once you raise your consciousness and raise your frequency to a high level, that's when you start understanding when um, things outside of people are communicating to you. You know, like um, you may hear like uh, this song came on in my car the other day. Uh, private eyes watching you, watching your every move. That's basically the universe communicating to me. You're being watched. Wherever you go, you're being watched. Be careful. Stay in the spirit. Um, um, stay humble. Stay holy. You'll be fine. But you're being watched. So when that song came on, I noticed that, yes, I was being followed by different people. I'm not making this up. So when that song came on, private eyes watching you, that's basically the universe communicating to me. You're being watched. But see, when a certain song comes on the radio, you're going to be like, oh, that's my song. Well, I like that song. You never gonna think that that's the that's the universe trying to communicate something to you. Um, uh, uh, angel numbers one 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 four 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 three 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 two two two. That's also signs and the unit the universe trying to communi communicate to you. When you see on the clock three 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 or four 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 or uh, five five five, and you see it in that sequence, them are angels trying to communicate to you to get your attention. Just don't go by it was four forty four or it's three thirty three. No. You're, you're, that's that's the universe trying to communicate to you because you are somebody that's that's supposed to make a difference and your and your um uh, your presence cannot be disturbed and you have to pick up on what the universe is trying to communicate to you because God because God want to get some things done before judgment He want to use you to get things done so um I just wanted to share with y'all that you know animals communicate the chosen ones communicate to all people but you got to be operating on a high frequency a high consciousness. To, 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 to understand what the animal is trying to say to you, to understand what the birds are trying to say to you, to understand what the crows, the crows are trying to say to you. 
um to understand um 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 uh, what God is trying to say to you. And I want to say this one last thing. I want, to, I want to give you this one last thing real quick before I go. Um, when I was about like, I say like 13 or 14 years, maybe, maybe 15 years old, I was in front of a hospital and I seen a bunch of crows. It was like, maybe like, oh man, it, it was hundreds of them. And I was young. I didn't understand it. It was like a hundred, it was nighttime. And it was like a hundreds of, clo- of crows on top of a hospital, hundreds of them. Maybe thousands. They was all in the trees on top on top of the hospital, and I didn't. And at 15 years old, I didn't understand it. Now I understand it. God was letting me know who I was at 15 and what I was sent here to do. And when I think back, when I seen all them crows, now I understand what uh, why I was why, why I was supposed to see that. Nobody else seen it but me. It was it was it was about eight o'clock at night. It was it was dark pitch dark out. And it was like it was hundreds of crows, hundreds on trees and on top of the hospital and on top of the hospital. And I knew. And well, at 15, I didn't know. But I'm 36 now. So now I know God was letting me know what that hospital was and basically letting basically basically let me know what my job is to do. I, I told you in other videos, hospitals are modern day concentration camps. They're not here to help you. They're here to, 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 to damage you further and um, uh, make you dependent on their pills. Uh, so, so, so the people that run the operation, Big Pharma, and the doctors, they can uh, go home to their you know five car garage, a uh, th- uh, three four story house, three or four three or four or five bath, swimming pool, basketball court in the back, off your suffering. I'm not making this up. You gotta understand how this world is set up. That in order for people, for some people to be uh, wealthy and be better off, you have to have some people on the bottom you stepping on. I'm just being honest, man, that in order for them doctors and all, you know, all the politicians to live lavishly, somebody has to be oppressed so they can so they can have it their way. But in the kingdom of heaven, those who are last will be first. Those who are first will be last in the kingdom of heaven. So their time is running short. They just don't know it yet. But um, I just want to share that with you. Animals, uh, they're very important. They communicate to you uh, um, in real time danger. Don't take them. Don't, do not take them lightly. But uh, I love y'all very much, man. Thanks for letting me share the video. I just want to share a quick video um, real quick. Just, just to enlighten y'all during the week. Just to, just to let y'all know, you know, how, the, how it's going down. How to, you know, how the chosen ones uh, can maneuver through this matrix. We got help. We got help from the spiritual realm. We got help from animals. And we got help just by, by our will. Our, our, just by our will to fight. Our will to please God. Our will to please God cannot be dampened. It can't be lessened. It can't be, it can't be squandered. It can't be squashed. Uh, none of that. That our will to please God will, pre- will prevail over everything. But um, and I want to share this with y'all real quick too. That's uh Huey Newton on my shirt. That's Huey P. Newton, leader of the Black Panther Party. And that's uh as long as he's as as long as I'm alive, he's not dead. But um, y'all have a nice day, man. I love y'all very much. And um, you know, keep praising God, keep believing in God, and um, uh, don't turn your sight from Him. He's everything.